Hello Nikki fans, I screwed up the timing a little on this one, so if you happen to catch this early, you'll be one of the lucky ones since we do have a limited time giveaway in this video. More great indie game trailers to check out, so let's get started. Let's begin with Lone Fungus, the mushroom metroidvania that looks fantastic, where special shoutout does go to the developer who is a supporter of the channel. I've been keeping an eye on this since I do love the genre, where it's currently seeking funding on Kickstarter with plenty of time to go. As shown, it does have more of a platforming focus with entire areas and corridors filled with spikes and having some tricky, almost Celeste-like platforming in this. A brief glimpse of the map is shown as well, which seems massive, and of course, it does give me some strong Hollow Knight vibes. I wonder what the different mushroom caps do, whether it's just aesthetic or gameplay affecting, but certainly one of interest. The narrative comic book adventure Fate of Kai launched about two weeks ago, and in a special tie-up with the developers, I do have 10 keys to give away via the link in the description. I love the look of this, previously mentioning that it would make my best upcoming hand-drawn indie games, and thus far, people seem to be liking this. Awesome look, reminding me of Disney movies from the 90s, so certainly one to pick up. This video is brought to you by Princess Castle Quest, which has reached its version 1.0. It's a Sukuban-style puzzle game with some interesting mechanics, using portals, floating blocks on water, mirrors, falling blocks and more, looking retro in all the right ways. I did spend some time in my childhood with games like Chips Challenge back in the day, so this did give me a little bit of a nostalgia kick where there are over 250 puzzles in the game with more to come. These are broadly split into 7 different level packs with different biomes, so pyramids, lava caves, outer space and more. There's also a level creator where the community and developers are continuing to add to this and even has co-op support which is interesting for a puzzle game. And if you're not convinced, there is a free demo to try but certainly another title of interest. Faceless warrior. Stay thy course. I sense a heavy burden within thee. This place of crimson shadows has summoned me. I cannot believe that I missed Blasphemous, Strife and Ruin when covering big content patches of February, but in one of the most intriguing crossovers, Miriam from Bloodstained Ritual of the Night makes an appearance in the land of Sestodia. This adds new hidden challenges where you must find the crystal shards to return her to her world, and in addition to the usual balancing changes and new abilities, does add a boss rush mode and a delightful 8-bit retro area as well. Something in the suffering land brought me to this place. Forgive my manners. My name is Miriam. Love how well this has done, and I'm really curious to see what's next from these developers. Waste Knots is a card-based co-op dungeon crawler which looks neat, set in a fairly stereotypical Borderlands-esque post-apocalyptic wasteland. While some of you are sick of card games, I do still think it's worth a look, and the co-op slant does make it even more interesting. The machines thought they were rid of us, but we need them for spare parts. It's up to us to get down there, grab what we can, and get back home before the meaner bastards show up. We call them beholders. Wraiths. 
giants. They call us snacks. So when those bastards come to claim your world, send their ass to hell. I mentioned the not so indie Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance when covering upcoming games like Diablo, but with the release of new gameplay footage, sad to say that it's not an isometric action RPG, but rather a third person one of these. However, it does still look great, so hopefully the systems and progression will feel satisfying, and it is coming out sooner than you think in about 3 months, so we'll have to see then. The title that I missed in December last year is Vice Wave 1984, an open world crime shooter that is of course inspired by GTA. However, it does use a very neon synth wave look where the action and driving looks slick enough. Certainly one for GTA fans, do show this indie developer some love. Just a tip though, if you have an indie game in development, I would advise against releasing in December since people are usually wrapped up in game of the year content and the traditional Christmas break, so your chances of being noticed are lower. Based on the opening seconds of this trailer, Vocabulantis looks like one of the most insane and ambitious platformers that uses stop motion as its base, but does look like a ton of work so wishing the developers all the best. It's a co-op puzzle platformer which I will always be curious about, where two young children struggle to restore peace to the city and looks like an emotional, touching story. Interestingly, some game mechanics are tied to emotions, such as when a character feels relief that gives them the ability to float, and the bond between the two characters is affected by their literal distance apart, so it does seem to be quite the tantalizing prospect. It may be blasphemy, but I don't like stop motion or claymation things like Wallace and Gromit, but I do have to give props where it's due since it does seem like a lot of work currently on Kickstarter at about 40% funding, do check it out and support it if you want. I covered Pyramid Plunge when talking about upcoming roguelite platformers, where the developer did reach out to say that they have a beta live and would like to invite those interested to sign up and to give feedback. It does give me a little bit of a Splunky vibe where you explore procedurally generated pyramids and even has co-op support, but I do like the look of this and it certainly has promise. Again, if you're interested and want to help, do check it out via the link in the description below. From the creators of Feria and Richard Garfield, the creator of Magic the Gathering, comes a new roguelike deck builder. With a pedigree like that, Rogue Book seems like it has potential, being yet another roguelite deck builder in the vein of Slay the Spire, but does have overworld exploration. Explore and re-explore with a new map every run. More cards, more power. 
I thought Faria was pretty neat, so to see a similar but different enough spin on things from the same developer is interesting, although we may have to classify this as under not so indie, with the developer and publisher being involved in this. The next title from the creators of Enodyne is Sephoni, an exploration platformer that has a similar PSX style look and looks to be equally weird and interesting. You're exploring a massive cave network on Sephoni Island, cataloging species, unraveling mysteries and even has some light puzzle elements. A non-combat focused title is always an intriguing prospect, so I do hope that they manage to pull it off. The fantastic looking Crime is one of my most anticipated Metroidvania titles, where the living weapon concept, black hole generation and freakish bosses are the draw, and the developer did put out a gameplay overview, so I'll leave you to them. Hi, my name is Erden Weisbrot. And I'm the director on Grime. In this short walkthrough, I will be exploring the Unformed Desert, one of several areas located under the broken sky. Just keep in mind, the game is still a work in progress. We have many improvements planned to fully polish the game by the time of release. As you explore, you will encounter the strange inhabitants of the world scattered about, and through them, piece together the truth behind their existence. In Grime, every weapon is unique, with their own strengths and weaknesses. Some will allow you to launch enemies into the air and find other creative ways to quickly dispose of them. Weapons are not the only tool in our disposal. We also, of course, have our heads. With it and good timing, we can absorb enemies. Here I find the boulder plate set. I can mix and match various pieces of it with another set. In addition to absorbing, I can also reflect back projectiles, damaging an enemy from a distance. I just picked up Charcoal Nerve Root. I will use it in a moment to temporarily buff my weapon. I am low on health and will need every advantage I can get. Every area has its own beacon, and when activated, they will reveal and track my location on the map. Scattered around each area are unique challenging foes. Defeating them will grant valuable rewards to customize your playstyle. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love the look of Scrap Deckle, a wizard's first adventure, and people seem to agree since it has already been fully funded. It's a top-down action adventure title where you play as a character named Blue, where the novice wizard has never left the academy and takes his first step out of the comfort of home, going on a grand adventure in the land of Scrap Deckle.
If the music and the trailer is anything to go by, expect that same sort of whimsy and humour, where I would describe this as some sort of crossover between Ethel Dew, Wapo, and perhaps some flash games of Newgrounds due to the look. There's non-linear exploration, and interestingly, the conversation system is a highlight since you can simply walk away mid-conversation, but my god, how great does this look? Love it to bits, taking the number one spot. To see more upcoming action-adventure titles, check out this video and I will see you after the jump.